Monday, July 2nd, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. The weather today and for the rest of this week, hot, and that's all I got. On today's show, we are preparing you, your boat, and your furry friends for the summer. Let's start with some news you can use. The town of Barnstable has a free pump-out program for vessels, and Assistant Harbor Master Jared Smaller takes us out to, on the water to show us how easy it is to get your boat pumped out. A gorgeous day on Katua Bay. We are jumping on board with Jared Smaller, Assistant Harbor Master, and we're going to go pump out a boat. This is a free program to boaters here in Barnstable. Um, Jared's going to tell us a little bit about the program, and you're going to see it live. Already tied up to the boat. Uh, we open the always wear gloves and eye protection. Get the cap open. forward in the compartment here we have our hose this boat has a fully electric pump as does the other one that we use pump out boats use a diaphragm style pump that essentially right from your boat into the holding tank. Flip this on with cam lock levers. Make sure it's closed so that we don't have anything happen initially. Turn it on. <clears throat> then slowly open the valve. glass that shows what's coming through and right now there's actually not too much in this boat so right now it's just cycling through what it's got there so that's pretty much done um, the tank on this boat was full it would probably take about 90 seconds to two minutes for it to pump it all the way out close the lever before we open anything else up so that we don't discharge anything essentially how the pump out goes. Nice and quick and clean as you can see it's there's nothing that leaks out. It's a completely sealed system. And the final step that we do is we leave a business card on board that does have all of the information for the pump out program. They have our phone number and the email address for the pump out program so if you need service. And we put the date and the time and who pumped your boat. So when these people come back on board, they can see that their pump out was done and their boat's all set and the holding tank is ready for the weekend. How important is it for the environment to do this on a regular basis and not uh, get your tanks too full? Um, the tanks are really, they're a sealed tank, so unless you have a failure in the tank, there's not going to be any leakage for the most part. Um, it's a good service because A, it's free and it's funded through state and federal grants, but it's also just our environment. I mean, the water is a huge resource here in the town of Barnstable in many ways, recreationally and commercially. Um, right over all through this area is a huge shell fishing area that the last thing we want to do is be pumping sewage into it. Um, you know, it leads to neurovirus and all kinds of other things. Right. So, and just so, and it affects the ecosystem and what we are as a town and as a region. Right, and I know that the, we're here at the Katuit um, uh, town dock, but where else is this service available? This service is available town-wide. Um, mm -hmm. We have a boat here that services primarily the Three Bay area, 
of Katua Bay, North Bay, and West Bay. And we also travel to Hyannis to offload. And then we will also stop in East Bay if we need to. Uh, we do have one regular customer over in East Bay. And then we also have another boat that's in Hyannis that services the Lewis Bay and Hyannis Port area. And that boat can come over here. This is a busier area because it is larger for us. Sure. Um, that boat can come over here if we had a really busy day that needs to supplement. And then we have two shoreside facilities in Hyannis, both at Bismore Park. And then we have another shoreside facility in Barnstable Harbor because there just isn't as many boats. There aren't as many boats that need pump outs over there. Right. So the shoreside facility works well for us. Okay. And the actual um, uh, ability for people to, uh, you know, call and email on a busy weekend, what's kind of the time frame for folks? Should they, you know, kind of anticipate getting the, the pump out? or? Yes. It's always better if you can anticipate and plan ahead for it. Uh, that gives us the opportunity for any weather issues. Uh, yesterday it was really windy that if we wanted to do this yesterday I would have tried to reschedule because it was just too windy. Right. Um, we definitely don't want to cause damage to a customer's boat, to our boats, we don't want to get anybody hurt. There's too many opportunities for bad things to happen if it's a really poor weather day. Uh, wind and lightning are our biggest deterrents to being able to do this. Okay. But. <clears throat> It also allows for staffing changes and other things that may come up that need to take a priority. So we would like a few days notice if possible, but when we're out here on the weekends, that's what we're out here to do. Um, these boats, although they can respond to emergencies and they're fully equipped to handle any of that stuff, the primary purpose of these boats over and above anything else is pump out. Um, Again, they're funded through grants, and as part of that, there's to be used for pump out. So yeah. these boats are out here to pump your boat okay. all the time. And let's just take it to the conclusion. Once it lands in this boat in the holding tank, <laughs> where does it go? This boat will then go to Hyannis. Um, okay. We'll take it by water, okay. and we will use one of the two stations over there. And then from there, that there are two pumps over there. They're called peristalpic pumps. They just operate on a different style little bit heavier duty um, because they have a lot further to draw everything from between emptying a 450 gallon holding tank on this boat into the town sewer system so it okay. goes right into a pumping station that's there at Bismore Park and ends up right in the town sewer system excellent and our north side station as well pumps right from this tank there into us into the town sewer system as well so everything okay. is treated properly it ends up just where it would if you were flushing right. the toilet at your home and where it should go exactly Exactly. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Animal Control Officer Charlie Lewis has some hot tips and fireworks cautions for our for furry 4th of July. Well, the weather certainly feels like summer has arrived. And with that are some really big things that you need to remember with animals. Uh, with me today, we have Charlie Lewis. Charlie... We got a lot to talk about with the weather and with the things that happen in summertime with our animals, right? Correct. All right. So first off, it's way too hot to have an animal in a car. Yes, it is. Um, it, number one, it's against the rules and regulations in the Commonwealth of Mass. And people now have the right to make their own determination whether a dog is in trouble or not. And they can actually break the window and take the dog out. They have to first search for an owner. If they don't succeed in finding someone and they really feel that dog is in trouble, they call the police department and then they break the window and take it out. But they must stand by until a police officer arrives or animal control. Then we take possession of the dog. And what we're going to do is bring it to the veterinarian. Even if we feel there is no need to, we will take and transport it there just to cover and make sure everything is okay. Now, animal control, police officer, or a firefighter can break the window and remove a dog as well. We tend not to do that. We'll call one of the um, rescue people, uh, fire department-wise. They have a little tool that we can hopefully open the door with, what we call uh, one of the local contractors that tow cars, and they can open the door as well. We try not to break a window, but I can tell you that if the dog is really in distress, that will happen because you have to get that dog out 
and get it treatment right away. Um, right. We've had, in the past few weeks even, an individual that has been in, coming through town has three or four cats in the car and a dog. It appears to be living out of the car. And, you know, it's, it's an accident waiting to happen, unfortunately. Right. So uh, let's talk about the temperatures of a car. So, you know, most people think that, oh, it's the 60s or 70s. I'll leave a window open, and that should be fine. The dog will be fine. But that's not true, is it? No. In fact, most of the heat doesn't come from above. It comes from the asphalt parking lot. If you're parked on blue stone or, or stone dust, it may be a little bit differently. But when you go into a parking lot, you're talking serious. If it's 75 degrees out, parking lot generally is between 115 and 125. We have a digital thermometer that we take temperatures with. We can shoot through the open space of the window and determine the interior temperature. We can take and compare that to the parking lot in the sky, um, et cetera. But generally speaking, in the first 15 minutes, the temperature is going to go up somewhere between 15 and 20 degrees, maybe as much as 25. If uh, it's 95 out, in 10 minutes, it'll be 114 in that car. Wow. In 30 minutes, 130 degrees average. Right. So, you know, on the Cape here, we'd probably say we get an average of 75 when it's really warm. We get 80, 85, so it doesn't take long. And even if that vehicle is in what many consider to be shade, it doesn't make any difference. The sun, the more glass in the car, the faster it heats up from, from above. Okay. Everything comes from the bottom about the same. Okay. So, so best advice? Leave your pet at home. Right. I wouldn't leave a cat in a, in a car even though they're going to curl up and be right in the sunshine. They love it. I would not do it because they'll overheat. As far as a dog goes, I wouldn't leave a dog in a car for a couple of big reasons besides the temperature factor. But because everybody loves animals, and dogs in particular, they want to stick their hand in and pet the dog. Mm -hmm. And we've had people that are bitten by doing that. Uh, just a few days ago, an individual was reaching into the back of a car where the hatch was open and the dog was tied inside the car. They got too close and boom, they got bit in the face. Mm. No fault of anybody's, right. you know, but it does happen. And, and I just suggest that most of the time dogs are better off at home um, temperature wise. And even when it's cold, same, same thing applies. Same thing applies. And there's also another real danger to specifically dogs at this time of year. Um, fireworks are illegal in the state of Massachusetts, but we tend to have some firework happy neighbors and uh, <coughs> people having parties. What's the mix between fireworks and dogs? They don't mix. Very seldom does a dog appreciate firecrackers. And uh, the more, like the strings of them, when you do that, they probably react even more so. Uh, a lot of dog bites this time of year because of fireworks. Very innocent, you know, bystander gets bit by the dog because of it. I recommend that you put the dog in the basement when we have the big fireworks around town. You know, they have them out on the sandwich line from uh, the golf course out there. So people in that neighborhood, they should put the dog in the basement or put them in the bathroom where it's not going to be as confined. And usually that's in the center of the house, it's not an outside wall. Yeah. So the noise tends to be a little bit easier on them. Uh, but I always put my dog in the basement. It's cooler and plus the noise is, is quite less. Um, neighbors are going to fire, the crack is off. There's very little we can do to stop that. Right. And another thing that we've noticed out there too is that dogs are out and about when these fireworks start going off and they get incredibly scared and can run if they're not um, uh, tethered anywhere or even slip their collars. That, is, that happens frequently as well. Uh, it's a very good point. I really recommend putting a collar on so that you can put one finger underneath of it and have a short leash this time of year. I walk my dog on a very short leash. Uh, odd part of the year I'm on a 18 foot, say, when I'm out in the woods and uh, about. But when I'm walking this time of year, I use a short. Um, we have Father's Day car show coming up 
on Main Street in Hyannis this weekend. And um, again, short leash. Uh, it's very, going to be very hot. The pavement is warm. Um, we'll have the young people, you know, being pushed in the carriages and what have you. And dogs generally don't mix with that type of uh, temperature. So you have to be really, really careful. Short right. leash. Short leash, and, uh, you know, they kind of do like that cool house, and, uh, uh, you know, they might need some time away from us every now and again, too. <laughs> and the other uh, point I would make is that we should always carry water for them as well. You know, we stop, we get a, a you know, some people get a soda, some may get a beer, or, uh, you know, water, what have you. But we should bring water for our pet, too, if we're going to walk Main Street in any distances at all. Exactly. Uh, when I walk in the conservation area this time of year, I have a bottle of water for the dog. Great point. Talking about conservation uh, areas, uh, you ran into a situation today, uh, just before you got here, with a, a baby fawn. Somebody called and says that it looked like it was all alone, but tell us, Charlie, was the fawn really alone? No. No, fawns, when a doe has a fawn, drops the fawn, they come back. They leave because they don't want other wildlife to know where that, where that fawn is. They will be alone all day long. Deer generally go at night more so than during the day, but the mother may visit, may not. Uh, they go in, they feed, and they leave. They do not hang around with their young. Okay. And it's all by nature. It's perfectly normal. And if a human happens to come across a fawn, Leave it right alone. You can call us. We'll mark where it is. We'll kind of keep an eye from a distance. But we want to leave that animal all by itself. The mother will come back to it. Now, obviously, if there's an animal, that, a deer that's been hit on the road, right. that may change the picture a little bit. But uh, this time of year, we don't tend to see as many deer strikes. Right. So at this point in time, when you see those babies, mom's just out there making sure that nobody else knows where that fawn is and just leave them be. Nature pretty much knows what they're doing, don't they? Yes, they do. They cover the story much better than we can. Excellent. Thanks, Charlie. Okay. Kevin Shanley joined us in studio to highlight all the awesome, fun-filled family 4th of July events in the town of Barnstable. With weather in the 80s and 90s coming up, it's not too soon to talk about July 4th. It literally is just weeks away. With me today, Kevin Shanley, who is the coordinator for the 4th of July activities here in the town of Barnstable. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate your time and uh, having me in today. Oh. <coughs> this looks like uh, a whole brand new 4th of July celebration for the town. Um, you're uh, going to walk us through what's different from yeah, the years past. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... We're fully embracing the Town of Barnstable component here. So the Town of Barnstable 4th of July celebration. In the past, this parade was called the Hyannis 4th of July Parade, um, which went along with the other villages. In the morning, they have um, uh, West Barnstable, West Barnstable, uh, Katuit, Hyannisport, um, Centerville has a parade. And this is the Town of Barnstable's official parade. So a lot of folks didn't know that. They thought maybe it was just the Hyannis Village Parade. This is the official Town of Barnesville Parade. And so when I came on board um, back in February, I looked at, kind of analyzed this event and said, what are we missing here? I feel like we were missing continuity and a very um, uh, 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 concise message uh, and marketing effort for these four separate events that we had throughout the evening. So at 4 o'clock, we have a parade that goes down Main Street, starts at Ocean, the corner of Ocean Street in Maine, goes down Main Street and ends at C Street, and then the parade route circles back down South Street to the starting line. Uh, and then at 5 p.m. on the Hyannis Village Green, we have the Barnstable Town Band, who has been performing uh, for many years on the green. Um, and at 7 o'clock at Aslington Park, we have our pre-fireworks concert with Joe & Co. Uh, they're a local band who's been... Um, performing a number of times over the years uh, for this specific event. And then we have, the, of course, the fireworks um, over okay. Lewis Bay, Hyannis Harbor at 9 p.m. Um, and so we looked at this event and said, let's, let's fully embrace 
this as a celebration. That's really what it is. Right. You know, you look at Boston and the Boston Pops Esplanade Fourth of July Spectacular. You know, and what can we do here in Barnstable to make Bar the town of Barnstable the destination for Fourth of July on Cape Cod? And so here we are, the town of Barnstable Fourth of July celebration. So it's uh, it's going to be a phenomenal day. Okay, so the the parade which is one of my favorites. Uh, you know, we'll have all sorts of different floats and marching bands, mm -hmm. um, but there's things that are wrapped around each of these time events, you know, the four o'clock parade, the five o'clock town band concert. Mm -hmm. Give us a flavor of, you know, I got a bunch of kids with me. What am I going to do from four to nine? Well, and that's <laughs> what, that's, you know, in the past, and uh, it's been a phenomenal event for many, right. many years. And um, in the person who did it for nine years before me, almost right. a decade, um, Megan Kenny was the coordinator of this parade, and she did such a phenomenal job. Right. Um, and so I'm excited to uh, to kind of pick up where fill fill extremely large shoes. Right. Um, and so we are um, we're fully embracing, like I said earlier, we're fully embracing family friendly, jam packed entertainment for six hours in the evening, four to ten p.m. Um, and so we have the parade at four o'clock. Um, the theme for the parade actually this year is one Barnstable, seven villages strong. So again, going back, town yep. of Barnstable, this is the parade. And then at five o'clock, like we, like we discussed, there's the Barnstable Town Band. But also in that, from five to seven p.m., in that two hour window, we have nonstop entertainment up and down Main Street, down to the waterfront, oh, cool. Bismore Park. Um, so one of our returning groups in the parade is the Roaming Railroad. Um, and so it's this it's long choo-choo train uh, style railroad car, um, small that's, that's um, made for kids to ride on. So that'll be in the parade. He's going to circle back. And then from 5 to 7 p.m., he's going to give free rides around the Village Green. Oh, fun. So around the, out towards um, South Street, back up. So free rides uh, nonstop for, for two hours, which is going to be really exciting for the right. kids. Um, we have free family lawn games up on the Village Green as well, um, whether that's cornhole and, and you know just an area to or you know have a have some free play time if you will. Um, Maybe a picnic dinner. Sure, absolutely. Enjoy the town band. Right. Enjoy the enjoy the activities that are happening on the Village Green. We have a whole new decoration plan for the for the Village Green this year right. in the in the bandstand. Yep. And then of course uh, we have singers and songwriters up and down Main Street. Um, we have a um, jugglers this year. We have Mr. Vinny, the Bubble Man. That guy is wicked cool, <laughs> <laughs> and the bubbles are huge. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and uh, he's got some surprises this year as well. So okay. that'll be exciting. Um, just something to really focus on on being family centric, family entertainment, um, and uh, then of course seven o'clock. Uh, seems like everybody everybody knows about that pre fireworks concert. Uh, like you said earlier, Joe and Co. will be will be performing, um, but maybe if that's not not your flavor, up on Main Street we still have nonstop entertainment going on. We have Jordan Renzi, who's a local singer songwriter, uh, new this year. We have um, Michael Fanuccio, who's also nice. a singer songwriter, um, grew up in Barnstable, West Barnstable, um, and this year he is he's having a spot in the in the festivities in the right. celebration. Um, and again, the long games are going to continue through through that as uh, that time period as well. Right. So so from five to, to nine p.m. And once the Joe and Co. set is over at nine p.m., cue the fireworks. This year, the fireworks again will be on iHeartRadio on yeah. WXTK. We'll, they will stream the official soundtrack. Um, and so we at Azleton Park will will cue the fireworks to begin, which is always exciting. Um, and uh, up and down the. Ocean Street, over around uh, all town town property. You can you can see as long as you're facing the water, facing <laughs> the water, facing Lewis Bay, you can yeah. see him. So it's an exciting time. So we're we're very um, excited to to see what this year has in store, and and the weather will be sunny and. 80 degrees. <laughs> Absolutely. We're already going to call the weather. It is going to be yeah. nice. I think Doug the Quahog uh, next week will also predict a very beautiful 4th of July. Oh, for I'm us, sure. So. Well, Doug's always <laughs> very good to us. <laughs> and he's been uh, quite the prognostic in the last few years. He's <laughs> done really well. So let me just ask you, back it up just a little bit. So, um, you know, this has been a town event for many, many years. As you said, Megan mm -hmm. has done just a wonderful, wonderful job. Yeah. What made you want to take on this 
kind of uh, uh, event is it's yeah, an undertaking sure Kevin. sure events have always been uh, in my blood from the beginning um, I uh, was very fortunate to work with the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod for for a number of years and in my last capacity uh, for two years um, and uh, I, I started out on a new venture recently as well and and I said you know I want to I want to do something I I've grown up in the town of Barnstable uh, my entire life. I've lived here, gone through Barnstable Public Schools. And I said, this is something that I think I could, I, I want to add my own flavor to it, but I want to, I, I want to fully embrace, um, you know, take ownership of, of something that's, take ownership of a small part of something that's much larger. Um, and uh, so, so in, in short, events have always been in my blood, and it's something right. that I've always been looking at and saying, well, I'd like to give that a shot one day. So. Excellent. So you got, you're excited, right? I am. You're ready to I'm go. I'm ready to go. We're ready to go. Anything else you want our residents to know about that day? You know, the, the come on down, Hyannis Main Street, Hyannis Waterfront, the village of Hyannis, the town of Barnstable. We're going to have 4 to, 4 to 10 p.m. nonstop entertainment. Come on down. Enjoy it with your family. Enjoy it with your friends. And it's going to be a night to, uh, to, to be down there and not to forget. Right. We also have all of the schedule of events on the Town of Barnstable's website. So if you are looking for a particular musician or uh, some of the activities that are yeah. happening, Town of Barnstable uh, website has all the activities. And I'm glad you brought that up. One thing to add is online, we have an online application form. If you or your group's interested in participating in the parade, right there it says parade entry form. Click that. Parade entry will... Uh, We'll be cutting off soon at the end of the at the end of the month in, in okay. June, um, but but be quick. We we can definitely uh, get you in there. The uh, you know with it give us a week notice and we'll get you in there. So excellent. We're here ready to we're ready to have a great event. Fantastic, Kevin. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Paul. The community calendar has so many Fourth of July events. Too many to list here. So just check out the town of. Barnstable's website at www.townofbarnstable.us for all the parades, music, and fireworks. Comments, comments, suggestions, accolades, connect with us on Facebook, email us, or send us an old-fashioned note by Carrier Pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.